Steady rests. There are times when they can be absolutely invaluable to a wood turner. These two I made a while ago and I have videos available if you want to see how they're made. I'll put links in the description box down below this video so you can check them out. This one is my own design as was this one. With this one I can put it into the large chuck. I can put the adapter in there and then set that into the tail stock. When a spindle is in the other chuck in the headstock and the end is finished on it, you can put it inside here and put strings around to hold it steady as you work along the rest of the shaft. Very handy at times. I made uh, this one quite a while ago and it rides on this piece that sets between the bedways on my lathe and it just comes up between here and it's bolted down to hold it steady. Recently, I'm doing a project now, in fact, where I need another steady rest where the end of the spindle can come through here, be held steady with the strings again, and then I can work on the end of it. I'll demonstrate that, show how it's made, mostly with a slideshow, and stick around. We'll do that right away. This board is five and one half inches by ten and one half inches with a one half inch hole drilled in the middle. I used my router table to make the dado and the dado will accept the vertical board. The vertical board is much taller than needed but it's what I had available and I could see no reason to cut it off. I did not glue them together because if I choose to make another vertical board with a different sized hole in it I can use the horizontal board to hold it as well. The assembly is mounted on the piece I showed you that sits between the bedways. I slid the board up against my step center in order to mark the center of where I want to drill the hole for the spindle to come through. Just a gentle tap was all that was needed to leave a depression that I could use to center the 2 inch Forstner bit I used to drill the hole. I drew a 6 inch circle centered on that mark and bisected the center with two lines at 90 degrees. Then I drilled the two inch hole. Next I drove four one inch metal screws into the wood at the marks where the lines intersected the circle. I used metal screws so the string has less chance of slipping past the head of the screw. With the vertical board in the horizontal board's dado, I used my INCRA T rule to draw a line even with the center of the end of the horizontal board. I used three two and one half inch screws to hold them together. This shot shows how the end of the spindle comes through the hole. It's perfectly centered and just needs the strings to hold it for me to begin turning it. One of the questions on using one of these string steadies is what kind of string to use. This is a nylon string. It's handy because you can use a match or a torch, touch it to the end, a little heat, and it'll melt it so that it won't unravel. Unfortunately, the heat of the friction turning it does the same thing. It melts the string, so it doesn't last very long. This is just called kitchen string. It does not melt, so I tied a knot in the end to keep it from unraveling. And hopefully, it will work much better than the nylon string will for this purpose. I start by putting a clove hitch in the end. There are plenty of YouTube videos showing how to make a clove hitch. If you can't follow what I'm doing because my big fat fingers are in the way. Start with the clove hitch on the first screw. Go around the next one, around again, onto the next screw, again, keeping this up, and going back to the original screw where I'll do another clove hitch to finish it off. I think these are tight enough to hold this. Let's see what happens. Of course, the proof will be in using a thinner piece, and I'll be doing that in one of my videos. But I'm just going to use it like this and see how it does for turning a hollow on the end here. 
I'll be turning this at 500 RPM. Any faster and I might burn the string. So we'll see what this does. Seems to work well, although one thing I've learned is that I need to sharpen my gouge. So, not real difficult, but very handy to have. I did mean to mention that this is not my design. I don't know where it was, but I saw a picture of one, something like this, a long time ago. And so I based this on that. I hope this is some help to someone sometime. Have yourselves a great day in your shop. Be safe always. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for dropping in. Bye now.